electronic powered heads on cylinder vacuum cleaners are brilliant you know full well that i love them and many other people love them but certainly in the uk vacuum cleaners with a powered i.e that need a power supply hardwired from the machine are quite limited and you know when they are available they're quite rubbish there's always a compromise usually soft brushes well this is the floor head from a vax not mine i bought this off ebay for this project vax air involved with its very stiff bristles and the aim for today is to try and make this into a standalone powered head that will fit many vacuums so let's have a go yes hello my vacuum cleaner chums how are you today yes this is i believe one of the cheaper ways of being able to build yourself a fits all power nozzle this is it's from a vax air evolve but it is a c85 acpe underscore power head but you put in vax power head and this is what comes up this cost me 15 pounds the key to this project is the voltage look 220 to 240 volts but obviously it has a proprietary i've got to hide that because i've already done that bit power connector because again the vax air evolve plugs in and has a special plug so we need to adapt that none involves taking it apart i'm just going to remove all of these screws you're going to have to work out how your own power head if you don't buy one of these comes apart but basically undo every single screw we see there and in short order we have what we need it's fairly simple these are the voltage wires look and they are, go to the circuit board there's even an inline fuse so not that I can see why it would break. Obviously, this will have all of its built-in anti-storm mechanism. I know that on mine, it flashes the lights if the brush roll jams. It's why you do need to look for heads that are just 240 volt, because then you haven't got to start messing about, you know, converting voltages or doing step-downs, which is just impractical. Oh, next thing you need to do... Get yourself a little screwdriver and flick off the terminals. These have locking spay connectors like Dyson use. Hateful things. Eh. There we go. And then if we wanted here, I have, this is how I've tested this. This is just a cable from something. But with two spade connectors on the end. And if we plug these spade connectors into here, and I come just off a of shot and plug it in you'll see that it runs as simple as that that is all it needs and that is what you want now you could if you were doing this on the cheap literally cut a small hole there and put the cable out and you know off you go and you could even keep the plug to go into the wall but i'm going to do things a little bit differently because i want this to be somewhat nice and what I plan to do is to take off this cover, which comes off like so, revealing the wires. Ignore that. I cut that off to save having to push it back on. And you can just pull them out. You, I did think you, you could leave those in because they are quite flexible. So they might be better through the pivoting join, but equally the use this is going to get. And I didn't want another connection there i almost want this to be one cable straight out now i'm not going to use this cable because this cable is quite cheap and nasty instead look i have a very nice from a dc33 cable to use so the first thing i'm going to do is start to thread this into the floor head via 
this gap here in fairly short order thanks to being able to remove the back of that where the cable runs we have our flex push through and Billy bonus I could keep the original spade connectors on so I can put the neutral to there the light of there and they're even the right spades so they don't pull off there's i think i i trimmed a little bit long but equally you know that doesn't really matter so we can you know run the wires where they need to go and tuck up the cover etc and move on to the next step by stripping a bit more of the cable back look we can more accurately follow that which is needed for the you know, spinny mechanism to work. What I am going to do though, is just put a little drop of hot glue in places because obviously we don't have any built-in strain relief now, which could be a problem. If you're careful, you're probably going to be okay. But yeah, I always recommend it. I don't know personally who's going to be using this, you know, I could accidentally give it to Mr. Hoover Lux and he just can't trust him around things like this very often. Now, the other problem we've got is that I'd quite like it to exit out of there. And I suppose if I put my brain on before I started this, I could have fed it through. But equally, I'm perfectly happy to just tear a massive chunk of it out. It's going to be... Absolutely fine. And in the case of this Air Revolve, I'm going to put a little bit more glue around, maybe, and clip it all together. Oh, like so. And there we have it. It clamped on even more when I put the case on. So now I would consider that fairly safe indeed. And yeah, that's how it looked. Now, well, again, in theory, we can just plug it in and run it straight off of this plug. So, you, can, you, know, you could call that job done. Now, in terms of fitting in tools, obviously, this very much wasn't 32 or 35 or 30 anything millimeters. And the answer came in the form of an Electrolux wand. Now, I have a lot of these. Well, in the top of all of these, there's normally a white plastic bush that takes this itself to 32. And that is what, with the use of some insulation tape to pack it out and some hot glue to centre it. But actually, I wouldn't do that again because obviously I can only use this on 32 millimetres. Now, if you got creative with the plumbing iron and being q you could, you know, make little inserts that you can pop in hand out so for now we have perfect 32 millimeters and the start of <laughs> our little thumb power head in fact hang on with the help of adapters thank you mr manchester vax we can take out this now actually useless wand and put on its very tall. Oh, wasn't it? Oh, the adapter doesn't fully fit. Oh, hang on. I've got another way around this. Had to use the magic of tape for that one, folks. My adapter is very worn. I had it a while, but we can if we are so inclined. Oh, hang on. Ah, one of the adapters isn't locked straight, but I'm sure it'll be okay. Wow, that gives the V11 some pet. Crikey, the torque head 
has nothing on that at all. It does need, oh, that's why I like that on popping. It does need airflow to help it stick down, I've noticed. I had to have the V11 in boost for it to you know, feel like it should. Oh, that was a bit fun. Obviously, completely stupid. And probably not going to do much if you've already started getting your wand wobble. Like I have. It's probably not going to help hanging that way off either. So do not recommend before the usual suspects think that they know better. So we have created a thing. A thing is born. But what to put it with? Well... I am currently at the time of this video about to go and fetch something to help finish off another project whose after video will finish that. So, you've seen that first. Welcome to Powerhead Mark 1, the creation. Because now, of course, you would, you know, plug your ones in as normal. You get some cable ties or the clips from your solution tube and you would push you know, this all the way down the hose and plug it in and at its essence that is the simplest fun you can have if it's got a plug on it plug it in and you have a power head that fits all but i have another plan and that is what the next video will be an after video of a machine and tailoring this to fit machines a bit more properly so thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed. Like I can say the power head is the well, just type in air revolve power head and you can't fail to spot it. Or indeed any power head where that says 220 to 240 volts. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I and this power head will see you soon. Bye bye.